Hey you! Well, this is the first video in a series about rebuilding a reel to reel deck. And if you didn't watch the other video with my first experience with a reel to reel deck, I bought a fully serviced, all tested and aligned, and it had been run through, you know, the test tape adjustments and bias adjustments and everything. It was a GX4000D, and I know I paid, you know, pretty good premium for it, but knowing that it had been serviced up, it had new belts, it had, you know, been lubricated, and like I said, it's been tested, run through all the alignments and everything. For my first experience with a reel-to-reel, -reel, I didn't want to start off with a DIY deck and not kind of understand what I was hearing. And I'm glad I did that because if I would bought this one first, I would have probably thought, eh, this ain't that great. I'm not, I'm not even bothered with this, right? But having one that was all tested and serviced up, I realized how really good tape can sound. And I don't want to get into it you know, into this whole debate right now, but I feel like there's some music that I've been recording from vinyl to tape that actually sounds better listening to the tape. That there's something about the tape saturation kind of EQ that it does to the music when you burn it onto the tape that it's more pleasant to listen to. Not going to get into that in this video. I know people would argue there's no way the tape can sound better than the source, but to me it does add some convenience where I can put enough music on a tape where I'm not up flipping these 45 RPM vinyl over constantly and that sort of thing. So we're going to work on this deck. And this one, the, the other deck, I paid like 600 bucks for it. All ready to go. And it actually came with some tape and everything and reels. It was like, here you go. This one was 150 bucks, and it was sold as is. The only thing that it showed in the eBay auction was that it'll power on. And that was it. And so, when I got this deck, tape path was nasty. I couldn't even get the speed adapter on the capstan to change the tape speed to 7.5. It was so gummed up. And the switches definitely need to be deoxed and it's got a whole bunch of other issues but it works the tape drive works i had to do a little bit of you know footsing around with that but after it ran for a while it works the counter belt i believe is broken because the counter doesn't work we're going to get into that i've ordered a new drive belt for the main capstan drive belt that runs all the mechanism inside it the clutches on the reels work which is a bonus and we'll get into that when we're overhauling this thing about how important these little felt clutches are that drive the spindles on the reels so they can slip because that was one of the problems with the m8 tube one that we're going to work on later and I thought this would be a good introduction into working with a fairly simple mechanical reel-to-reel -reel deck. This is a 4000D. It's the predecessor to the other one I have. And then also this one's got metal heads versus those glass ferrite heads that the other deck has. And I've heard that they can sound different. And so the nice thing about this deck is the heads are in great shape. Clean them all up. There's almost no wear on them. I don't think this got a lot of use, probably because it got all gummed up and somebody didn't know to clean it and you know, probably started sounding pretty bad, so they just put it on the shelf. The other problem that this deck has, and I think it's a very common problem with electronics from this era, is it's got a lot of kiss and noise, which I believe are from transistors going bad. And they've kind of got a reputation these old Akai decks from having transistor death or transistor noise and we're going to go through and pull all the boards out and you know clean all that up we're going to recap the deck we're going to put new transistors in it so this is going to be kind of a fun project 
And I feel like, too, this is a very early solid state device. And Andrew Sparks from Sparkos has graciously offered to help me like go through the schematic with you guys and kind of explain how a transistor amplifier works versus a tube one. Because I really feel like I understand at least how single-ended kind of tube technology works. Never worked on solid state. And so to me, it's going to be a learning experience to go in here and not only just, you know, replace parts, but try to understand the circuit. I did find the actual repair manual, like the shop manual or, you know, like a service manual, for, not just the owner's manual, but it shows how to like test all the circuits and everything. And that's going to be helpful so I can, you know, do screenshots of some of that stuff so we can walk through doing that. The other thing that drew me to this model is it's one of these that has plug-in boards. It's got like a main board and then the, each record and each playback board plugs into that so we're not working on like one giant board. We've got nice small little bite size things to work on and then I believe there's a separate oscillator board too. And so Hopefully we can learn more about how bias on recording works and how to adjust that and how to, you know, optimize that to get good recordings and adjusting the V meters. And let me pull this other thing down that I bought to work on these. I went ahead and invested in this liter dB millivolt meter, which is supposed to be like the bomb for working on tape decks. And, you know, when we go through this series, I can maybe show you, you know, where you might need something like this, where you can get away with using something else. But I wanted to do this right. And the other reason, too, I got one of these, I do have a Tascam 32 deck that I bought that I thought it was going to be all serviced up and ready to go, but it's got some pretty serious I believe it's just adjustment issues and those decks have just a slew of adjustments because they were designed for studio use and so every bit of the EQ and all that stuff's adjustable and I think the EQ is like all out of whack on that deck. So we're going to be buying some test tapes and you know using this meter extensively on that deck but I wanted to kind of get a feel for working with this meter and test tapes or whatever we're going to have to do to get this little deck working. This one's got a lot fewer adjustments and a lot of the EQ and stuff's kind of baked into the circuit design but another fun tool for the shop and hopefully we can really get this new deck dialed in and I feel like that having bought this for 150 bucks if I end up destroying it it's not the end of the world where I really don't want to like screw up that nice task cam deck because other than the EQ and I don't know whether it's the playback or the recording or what's out of whack but it's definitely doesn't sound good and I know it's supposed to sound really good and so and it's not just subtle it's just out of whack it could have something wrong with the record boards or the playback boards or who knows but that's for a later date let's start off with something simple and I think this is going to be a fun project and it'll be our first dive into solid state electronics or at least mine and hope we can learn some stuff from it so anyway not going to get into any further stuff although the deck did clean up. I got the Caspin thing where it was all super cleaned up and cleaned up the little seven and a half speed adapter. The reels and the transport all seemed to work. I hooked it up to my system. It's definitely got some issue with oxidation on the switches. I could flip these switches around, especially this one up here, and you could hear like, you know, bad hiss and then it would kind of calm down. And, you know, I cycled them and got it working pretty decent. Played some, you know, put a tape on it, listen to some music. It does sound decent, and it's fairly close, but it doesn't sound great. And the bass response is kind of weak. 
and I feel like that these dirty switches plus that transistor noise and all that, it's never going to sound great until we go through it. So, but it does work. And so, you know, I don't know about the record function, but the playback works. So, this is a good starting point, and I think this will be a fun series. So, anyway, if you think you'll enjoy this content, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Thanks to all you Patreon supporters and all you other folks that help support the channel. And until the next video, have a nice day.